Okay, so I'm just going to return to the painting for a second pass. Some of the searching that I did in the first pass where I found a lot of different colors, a lot of interesting color values has kind of given me a new perspective about where this pair is supposed to be in terms of color and value. And also I'm going to mix in a little bit a sense of refinement at this point. Up until now, the painting has so much been just about this search. And of course, that is going to hamper a little bit your ability to kind of execute and make a really nice picture out of the painting. Now I want to focus on that aspect. So I do need to activate a lot of things about the background and the rest of the painting. Really, I need a whole new fresh paint layer on top of what is already there. The palette that I'm going to be using is exactly the same. I've laid it out like I did yesterday. I always try to keep my palette super well organized because, of course, in the heat of battle, right, uh, in, in the chaos of painting, you can lose very quickly your sense of organization. So at every stage of a painting, I try to kind of marginally affect my ability to kind of focus on what I'm doing, the very difficult, challenging aspects of what I'm doing, like uh, creating a balanced sense of color harmony, refining brush strokes, creating beautiful form and light effect. All of these things take such intense focus that if I'm worried about like my super disorganized palette, I'm going to be kind of hampered in that process. The painting at the moment then, as you can see here, is a little bit sunken in. And actually, rather than oiling out, I think I'm just going to dive right in and paint on top of it. The reason being, the reason that I would choose not to oil out, actually is I know that everything on the picture needs to be changed. There's not going to be a single part of it that I just leave behind as it was before. And so creating that new kind of fresh paint layer uh, means that I have to reactivate everything anyway. So there's not really a sense for me of putting that extra oil onto the surface of the painting. I'm going to start out in the same way I did before, just by kind of re-blocking in my shadow edge. Might give it a little bit of uh, linseed oil just to help the paint flow. Just a little bit. And I'm going to block it in lighter than I kind of know it's going to be eventually. The same kind of practice that I made really in the first video in this uh, pair of painting, I'm going to do that same thing in the second one where I kind of keep my values in the middle and kind of save my accents for a little bit later on. So right now I'm just trying to kind of reactivate the surface and at the same time actually kind of reconstitute a little bit some of the drawing, some of the design in the picture. So I'm going to kind of go over this shadow edge and um, kind of create the shape that I think I want to make, you know, and refine that, you know, always kind of refining at every stage, you know, the design of the picture, uh, trying to be a little bit maybe more flexible at this stage in terms of in the second layer I can be a little bit more confident about what I what I know the color values are going to be uh, so I don't have to kind of hold back and be quite so uh, uh, unified uh, at the early stages I kind of know because of the rehearsal in the previous stage I, I kind of know where my painting is supposed to go So my lay-in for the, for the paint layer that I'm making now is still going to be like a little bit, a little bit thin. I'm not really maybe scrubbing it in, I'm not washing it in, but uh, it's certainly not like a, um, I'm not making impostos at this stage, right? I'm just, just trying to get a bit of paint on the surface so that eventually that I have like a good kind of working context for the for the painting you know that I can kind of paint into it's the same thing that I really did in the first pass just a little bit more informed so a little bit more sophisticated and um, that's usually the kind of route that it takes in a way that you know you don't you don't kind of change so much of your approach when you you make the second pass you're just I think a lot smarter about about the, the values and relationships and colors and things that you want to make. So you can do it a little bit sooner than you would have before. You know, like painting is so much that process of kind of creating something out of nothing, right? We have this blank canvas and we need to turn it into something. Well, I didn't have a blank canvas. I had a pair of drawing actually that I made underneath this. You get the idea that we have to go from a world that is colorless to a world that, that, that contains color. And in that transition, knowledge, right? Found knowledge, discovered knowledge is uh, so important. It gives you so much.
So that's going to bring us to the end of this project. We really went a long way from the first stage where we just had this kind of really super generic block in into a pair now that has a sense of light, a sense of volume, specular highlights, color values that are both diverse and rich and uh, also contain the same kind of unity that you'd expect from something that is coming out of uh, an observation of light and form in nature.